Today you'll see how this blazer I've got behind me was sewn. It's more accessible than other types of blazers, easier to sew, made for neat fabric, super comfortable. And you could dress this up and down, it could be a staple. I have actually filmed a lot of the sewing for you to see. You will be able to make one too, so stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is about sewing a blazer. I think a lot of you might run away from sewing a blazer or think that's something you couldn't achieve or you might have already sewn several and you're pretty happy to sew a blazer and I think you'll enjoy this one. It is not a blazer that will take you days and days to sew. It's not hard to fit and I'm really sure you will be able to sew a blazer like this. What I'm talking about is the new Metra blazer from Love Notions. I was a pattern tester and I have one version to share with you. The Metra is for neat fabrics and there are two color options although the way that you sew the collar is the exact same way it's just the different shape on the front that you will see is what makes the difference one is a smaller lapel and rounded more classic short type collar the other one is just wider it has a wider lapel and a corner the construction technique doesn't change for either one lapel or the other it's just a visual thing that you might prefer so the one that has the smaller rounder lapel from the center will go straight down. The one with the wider lapel does not go straight down on the center front, there is like a slant. So it looks further away from the hips at the bottom of the blazer. My preference is the wide lapel. That is the version I've chosen to sew. I do enjoy that wide lapel. I think it looks a little bit edgier. It doesn't really make a difference in the way they are sewn. It's just the way they, they look. For the main body of the blazer, you have a larger center front piece that is actually the same that you cut out for the facing. So this central area here will have two layers and that composes the collar and all this central area and then the lapel that will fold over and then you have a small side panel in the seam of that side panel you will have a pocket entrance that looks like a welt pocket but it's not a welt pocket it's sewing a very different way to a welt pocket much more simple and the back piece has a center back seam with shaping it's of course you have your one piece sleeve not many pattern pieces when you have all your pieces in front of you you will see that there's not many of them the construction is not difficult because the metro blazer is new it will be 25% off for the first week the release week so I will leave all the details below in the description box and my affiliate link if you would like to use it. If you do use it, I'm very grateful because a little commission comes back to me and that is one way that you can support my work here on the channel. I had mentioned this was for neat fabrics and I would like to specify more about the fabrics here because you need a fabric that's medium to heavy weight with 25% horizontal stretch. If it stretches vertically, nothing or minimally, that doesn't really matter. You just need something that will stretch sideways 25%. Now, you need your fabric to have some sort of structure. You don't want something too drapey, too floppy because none of these pieces are interfaced. All this collar section here won't hold up. So fabrics I would avoid are the athletic knits I really like to sew with. Although they are medium weight, they just don't have that structure to hold up this collar. Um, stretch velvet is another one, velour. They are just too soft, too drapey. And I think you could make the blazer with these types of fabrics, but it would take extra interfacing, some pieces, a bit of fabric manipulation to get it to sit right, to lay right and to look right. Otherwise, the fabrics that are really good are double knits, ponty, Liverpool, scuba, that type of medium to heavyweight knit that holds up its structure. I think those are the best ones. I have in the past touched some garments made out of fleece that are very structured. You will just need to check that they do stretch. And you also need to be careful that it's not too thick, too bulky, because some of the construction methods include burrito rolls and it could get super bulky. If you like sewing with fleece, find one that's medium weight and structured that stretches the right amount. It could work. Now the fabric I have chosen is <laughs> was super hard to work with, it was very heavy weight, very dense, my needle could barely get in there. I even had a hard time putting my hand needle through there to do some hand basting. So it actually ruined my machine. Um, I mentioned a few weeks ago that I had a problem with my sewing machine. This fabric put so much strain on my machine and I had to get it serviced. So just be careful and be careful with your machine as well, depending on the type of machine. You know, if I'd stuck to a ponty, I think I would have been fine. But the fabric I chose is extremely thick. You'll see it in a little while. It's very thick, it's very heavy and very dense. 
and my machine did not like that but I got it done so that's good I'll just be careful with these types of fabrics from now on the metro includes a full size range so you will see extra small to 5x included there is a standard bust option and a full bust option and that depends on the difference from your high bust to your full bust if it's 0 to 3 the standard bust will be okay if it's 4 to 6 the full bust will be okay now if you have more than a 6 a 7 8 difference then you might need a further full bust adjustment on the full bust piece additionally to what is offered there for myself i cut an extra large straight extra large the length of the blazer is one inch shorter than what my blazer is so from the nape to the hem at the back it's about 22 to 23 inches finished length so just knowing that you know you should be able to know if that is a length that you like for yourself it's easy to measure yourself or compare to other jackets that you already have that you like the length of and compare if you are shorter than five foot five you know you might need to shorten the blazer if you are taller you might need to lengthen it and there are instructions in the pattern to do that there are shorten and lengthen lines on all these pieces in the view that i've chosen there's, there's quite a slant in the shape so when you make length adjustments there they might get disaligned it's just a matter of smoothing lines and making sure that it makes sense after you've added or taken away some length in my case i have an extra inch in the body of the blazer and for the sleeves i have an extra one and a half inches and that's because i'm three inches taller than what love notions patterns are made for so length adjustments adjustments are given for me you might be shorter you might need to be taking length away and that's a great thing about sewing that we can customize and get the clothes to fit us so that's good that the shorten and lengthen lines are there and in the instructions you'll find diagrams for that as well as for the ease this is a semi-fitted blazer even though it's designed for neat fabrics it doesn't have negative ease but it has small positive ease so if you're making the standard bust you have two inches of positive ease at the bust if you're doing the full bust option, you have four. Usually if you've done full bust adjustments before on other patterns or anything, you will see that when you're adding space for the bust area, you end up adding space at the waist and the hips, and that's what happens here. In my case, mine is a standard bust, so it is semi-fitted. You know, it's not meant to cross over. It might hit the set close to the center, but it's meant to be worn open. It doesn't have any closure like a button or anything like that. As for the sleeves, I think there's not a lot of room inside your sleeve to wear a lot of things underneath. Maybe something very lightweight, like a shirt that has a really lightweight fabric could fit under there comfortably. There are bicep measurements in the size chart and in the finished garment measurements. Have a look and compare because it is a sleeve that is slim fitting. You don't have a lot of space in there so if you want to wear a chunky sweater underneath or anything that is going to add volume you might find that they are a bit tight in my case i'm always wearing my blazers with things like this you know my arms are always free but i'm talking in my context of hot weather and light layering that sort of thing but if you're looking to make this as something that you can throw on a lot of things underneath you might want to consider sizing up now the sewing segment of this video is a bit long a, a bit longer than usual because it's I'm not just sewing a t-shirt or something that's just a few things you know and it's actually got to do with the decisions for construction that I made for myself if you follow the pattern instructions there is an area there and I'll put the line out here where you can see the lapel or the front collar piece just top stitch with a quarter of an inch all the way to the bottom so if you follow that and do that you'll be done in no time <laughs> but I decided I wanted my blazer to have a bit more formal look I want it to have a really clean look on the front. My fabric has stripes and there's something about stripes and seams going across stripes I don't like. I don't want visible top stitching to go through them. And the idea, the vision I had for my blazer was something that could be formal, that I could wear a super nice dress underneath and that I could dress it down if I wanted to. I find that if you make decisions to make something really casual looking, I think it's harder to dress that up afterwards, in my opinion. <laughs> so basically I'm focusing the sewing on the parts that could be a little bit fiddly, like the welt looking pockets. They aren't real welt pockets, but there's a little corner there that you need to fiddle with a little bit. I'm showing you prep work that I did first to stabilize some of these pieces, some of these corners. I'll show you in detail how to sew the short collar construction that is the same whether you choose the rounded smaller lapel or the wider lapel with a corner it's exactly the same thing i'm also showing you how to enclose everything with a burrito roll and i took a large section to show you something different that you can apply to this blazer 
or to other blazers or jackets that you might have around and that is a break point it is a technique that is not included in the pattern as i said you would just top stitch the facing down and that would be very fast but i didn't want to have that top stitching i wanted to have under stitching and it takes a few extra snips and doing it in different sections to be able to accomplish that and have the lapel lie beautifully keep the facings inside without being seen and having that under stitching in separate directions <laughs> you know what i mean when you see it so let's hop over to up close and so personal This large piece has the shoulder seam there and this will be the section used for the short collar. There is a corner there. I like to reinforce that. I've cut an L type shape piece of interfacing, nothing really special and I'll just fuse that on. I've drawn the seam allowance there, 3 eighths of an inch and along that yellow line I will do a stay stitch and right at that little intersection I've marked the dot that will be clipped into later to allow this to extend so you can sew this onto the actual neckline of the jacket. I've cut these two fuse on the other side and I'll mark the same, I'll do the little dot, everything the same. And you cut actually cut this pattern piece four times. Two are for the outer layer and one for the inner layer that will be like a facing. So I've got an identical piece like that cut out in a, just a black fabric that I want to use. I will also do the same exact thing on these corners. This is on the main piece and there is a little cutout rectangle that you need to do to do the pockets. On the facing piece, the lining piece, you won't need to cut. The piece will be completed there. And there are two dots there. I had already marked them on my fabric and this interfacing is so light I can see through them. So I've marked them again. And again, I've cut little L's out of interfacing that I'm just going to fuse on here to stabilize this. So I've done that there and here at the back, I have to do the same on the other side. You can see the dots are there. These are two pieces of the Liverpool fabric I'm using as a contrast. From these two pieces, I'm going to get my work pocket pieces. This is the pattern piece and I've already interfaced this Liverpool with lightweight interfacing. I know from experience that this fabric specifically has shrunk in the past. If I tried to cut this shape and then try to fuse it later, I'll end up with a smaller piece. So my go-to block fusing, and I'll just put these right sides together. I've got two of them. So they are already interfaced, and then I can just put my welt piece on top and cut it out super accurately. So I'm very sure now that I've cut it and it's the same size it's supposed to be. There are two little dots that you need to mark on the tops here on both sides. I'm happy this is nice and stable for me to snip into that later. Here you can see the blazer pieces partially. These two are the two front pieces. They are cut the same, exactly the same. Two pairs. So there's four pieces, two pairs mirrored. I have a solid black that will be my internal piece and that will be the lapel that you'll see on the outside when the collar flops open. So that is a black Liverpool. This stripey one is the main fabric and from the main fabric you'll see that there's a little cut out rectangle area that you need to cut but just on the main fabric not on the one that goes inside. That's why you can see that cut out right there. Up here you can see I've chosen the wide lapel. And up there is the section that will be the short collar and then that little section there will be the shoulder. This is the welt pieces that will be sewn into there. They aren't traditional welts, they look like welts but they really aren't. So those are those. Here are the two back pieces. There is a center back seam, there is some back shaping there. And then you can see these lateral pieces that are sewn onto the back piece. They aren't princess seams as such. It's just a lateral panel. This little seam there is the one that's going to be sewn there on the side and that will complete the side of the jacket. And underneath here we can see a one piece sleeve, just a normal long sleeve with a trued hem right there. This is one of the center pieces for the main fabric. You need to cut out this rectangle that's marked on the pattern. On the wrong side, I had stabilized those corners and marked the dots around the pattern. And then I have my welt piece that I had block fused previously. I marked the two dots on the pattern too and press that in half like that. These dots should match the dots that are on the other side here. So I'm just going to pin my dot through there with a pin. 
and I'm going to match the dot here on the back put a pin there and then on the other side I have a little dot right there marked maybe you can see it so I've pinned that there make sure you have the raw sides of the welts on this side and that the folded edge is towards this side and from that dot to that dot we're going to sew reinforcing there reinforcing there keeping the 3 8 seam allowance from the edge I can see exactly where I have my dot and I'll let my needle down Okay, there you can see I've sewn exactly from one dot to the next, keeping the 3 8 seam allowance there, it's very neat. Now I'm looking at this from the wrong side, I've got my fingers in between the welt pocket and this piece because I only want to cut into the main fabric, not cutting through the welt piece, just through the main fabric in this corner. Okay, so here we have one side, what you're going to do is take all this fabric and bring it on top of each other, right sides together. You see that snip there, then you bring your welt pocket out like that, you can see it there and that corner that we snipped allows this to extend like this and now we can sew that little piece from there all the way there and that will close this little corner of the pocket. So I'll repeat that again so you can see what I've done. Okay, this is what we have, we have the welt piece sewn from that dot. On the main fabric we have snipped we bring the main fabric onto itself right sides together we flip this little thing out like that we have this folded and now we just meet the edges right there and sew from the edge to right there so it will be just a really short stitch there So it's the same 3 8 seam allowance, my goal is to get to that yellow dot there. You can see I've sewn it through there but not catching this, you can see all this is still free, I just sewed up to there, reinforced. Okay, so after sewing that little seam, you can see it right there, right there, you go like this. And voila, you've got the perfect little corner for this pocket. And this will be sewn onto another seam later, that's why this is still hanging there. And now we have to do the same thing on this other side. We match that up there, you can see the yellow dot there. On this side, just because of the way the fabric is, I'm going to start here and finish over there. On this side I started there and I finished there and then when we flip this we have the perfect little corner there. So we have the perfect two corners there. Now if you want to needen this up and I for sure will, you can serge this edge and then just make sure you have the jacket there that you're not catching anything under there. You can serge this long end there and then this little short edge and it will just make sure that it's really neat. So that is how the pocket opening is sewn. It's not actually a work pocket, but it will look like one. After finishing these pockets, we can sew these two pieces on the top. These will be the center backs of the show collar. So I've actually got stripes on this fabric, so I've tried to match it up as best as possible there. This other one is just black. So two short seams, three eight seam allowance, and then we can press them open. These don't need to be finished because they will be enclosed inside, so you can just leave them raw like that. What I'm going to show you now is how to sew the short collar. It's a traditional short collar technique. You will see this on many patterns. This is the back neckline, the shoulders. We have the fabric right sides up and the back center seam has already been pressed nicely. Now we are going to take the main piece and align these right sides together. You can see that we have this shape here where the shoulder seams are there and this will be the collar. You can see that this is a curved seam right here and we have the shoulders. In order to be able to match the shoulders here and then keep sewing this along the neckline, 
this is where that snip needs to happen and this is where I have already stay stitched at the seam allowance 3 8 I have the dot that marks the intersection there 3 8 that way 3 8 so I've stitched with 3 8 seam allowance about an inch this way an inch that way and this is where I'm going to snip into there and the same on this other side where the other dot is now here on the corner of the shoulder seam with a neckline I'm also going to mark a dot there 3 8 seam allowance comes here then we have 3 8 seam allowance on the neckline dot right there and another dot right there this is where these dots need to match this dot that we've snipped into with this one here and this is where I'm going to sew with this side up so I can see this and manipulate it well so I'll just place that pin there and leave it and now we can sew the shoulder seam right there align it or 3 8 seam allowance so here we have the dot there we'll do the same thing on this other side get your pin through the dot here and match it with the dot on the other side in the shoulder seams I have not attempted to match the stripes on the shoulder seams unfortunately I just didn't have enough fabric to be able to attempt stripe matching on the shoulders okay there and now we have this center piece here we can match the center seam with the center back of the neckline right there and this is the section where you just need to be careful to sew up to there be able to pivot and keep going here I have that pin that marks that dot with the dot underneath and here as well I'll be sewing with this side up so that I can see and move all these excess out of the way when I pivot there keep going along the neckline up to there pivot again and then finish the shoulder seams and then it will just be one continuous seam and on the right side you have these little corners there now I'll be sewing this seam with a longer stitch length it'll be a basting stitch because I need to repeat the same process to attach the facing piece on the other side but I prefer doing this in a single layer I, I feel I have more control over the corner like that so it's all 3 8 seam allowance you can see my dot there that is exactly where I want to stop and pivot lift my presser foot rearrange pull away all this excess out of the way make sure the next stitch that happens is not over a pucker or a pleat or anything there I'm over that section and now I can just keep sewing the neckline these two seams are pressed open as you can see Can see that's where I want to pivot that yellow dot right there pivot move all this out of the way take that pin out hand crank the next stitch to make sure it's free and it's not on any pucker or anything there now we're free to continue So that's where that snip happens you sew the dot there that matches the dot on the other side and this is how it looks here you have that sharp little corner there and there okay so what we have sewn here is the main to the back so you have both main pieces right there now we have the lining piece which will be also the facing I'm using a black for this and I also have these little areas here that I will snip into because the same thing needs to be repeated. And now we have right side to wrong side. See, this is the seam. So we have the right side of the lining piece or the facing piece to the wrong side of the garment. This is where it gets tricky because you can't really see what's happening on the other side right here. And this is where I'll actually do some hand sewing. We have that dot right there that's already been sewn. I'm going to match it right there on the other side of the lining here. So those are matching. Now I'm going to get a pin and just go through all the layers here, right there, and then keep pinning here. 
this will give you a closed seam it will all be enclosed so then we keep pinning again this could have all been done in one stitch like putting all the layers together but I just find it easier to manipulate doing them in a single layer and just sewing it twice especially to get the precision in this section here so on the other side as well so it's basically the same process now the issue is that I can't see what this is doing on the other side because it will be on the underneath when I was doing it with just this one I could manipulate the fabric and push it from side to side but I can't do that anymore so my fix for this and it's what I would do in my normal sewing so I'm going to do it here as well is I'm going to sew this by hand a quarter of an inch here to a quarter of an inch there from each of the dots there this bit and that bit it will only be a few stitches that way with the needle and thread I can really manipulate and see what I'm doing so that I don't get a paka either here or there and that would just be my trick no one's gonna see it it's black thread black fabric and then I'll take my machine and sew normal and stop where it's already been sewn reinforce start again on that little section here where I'd finished by hand mm -hmm. continue I can see the stitch line that I already have I'll be sewing right on top and in this little area I'll also be sewing by hand quarter of an inch this way quarter of an inch that way so that is what I'm going to do I have this on my lap and I'm just doing some hand sewing I already put my first stitch through I'm pulling out the needle right here I'm doing pretty short stitch lengths and you see the, the thread it came out I'm gonna go back beyond that about an eighth of an inch look I'm not the expert at hand sewing but to sew this little piece here it's very very handy because I can see where my needle is coming out on one side and here is exactly where I would have pivoted with the needle there and I can see here that I can pull my needle out and there's no pockets nothing anywhere I'm very happy to do a tiny amount of hand sewing in this area to get a nice result I'm basically sewing about half an inch here it's not a lot you'll survive if you try and do this by hand as well this would have taken a few seconds to do from the dot there quarter of an inch from the dot there quarter of an inch it's not much and now I can sew by machine up to there and there and I don't need to worry about that space right there now I'm going to sew right on top of the other seam I had already done I can see it I can just sew right on top This is where I'd hand sewn here, so I'm going to stop about there, about a quarter of an inch before and reinforce. Now I can pick up over here and same, I have sewn that little bit by hand, so I'm going to start here where all this bulk is already out of the way. Also, I'm going to start a little beyond where that dot is. Okay, so let's see how that looks. That looks nice and sharp right there. And on the lining side, we also have that nice little corner. So they're both neat. They don't have pockets. And let's see the other side. That looks nice. And this other side also looks nice so I'm really happy with that before doing a burrito roll to enclose everything I'm going to I'm going to snip into this back neckline here it is curved so I do think snipping will benefit this the way it will hang and fall so that gives it more flexibility okay now what we do is all this back piece that's in here we're gonna make a little roll just a little roll there make it as tiny as you can and you're gonna bring this seam that's poking out from the back and meet it with this one here depending on the type of fabric you're using it could be quite bulky in there mine is not that lightweight so I think it will be like a tight fit in here match these two seams and then all along the neckline I'm using the wide lapel if you're using the, the smaller one it will be smaller and rounded there you meet this corner here and then all the way down to the bottom and this will include this horizontal space as well I'm going to take time and pin this and then show you how it looks here's the bottom then you go all the way up this 
wide lapel this could be narrow if you're doing the rounded one but technique is the same I will have a corner there and then this comes the center of this piece where all the back is in, in there rolled up goes across to the other wide lapel corner and then down and then down like that I'll start sewing from there up all the way it'll be a very very long seam Okay, past that huge chunk there, it's quite bulky. I was always keeping my finger there to touch that I wasn't catching part of the back piece that's rolled in there. After sewing this super long seam, you can just turn it. I'm going to fold these little corners first properly. So they, they come out nice and sharp. Same as here. Then you can just pull the back of the set in there to come all the way out. Instead of top stitching the whole neckline all the way around, I want to under stitch instead. I don't want any visible top stitching on mine. So I've tried my jacket on and where the lapel just naturally falls, this is the wide lapel, it'll bend at some point and fall naturally. That is the break point and I've marked it with a pin and then I've snipped the seam allowance right there. And on the other side of the neckline, I have the same pin marking the same reference where the break point is. So that will allow me to understitch in two different directions according to how the lapel will fall. I can feel the pin there, I'll just nip into that seam allowance right there. Basically on this side, this is how the lapel is going to look. So up until that break point, I want understitching to be under here, right there. So that will mean that the seam allowance will be sewn right there. But then this is how this looks on the front and then I want to understitch on this other side there so having that snip of the seam allowances in there will make sure that I can do that so I'll put a pin here inside here is where I snipped into the seam allowance so from there up I'll be under stitching there the seam allowance to this fabric and from here down I'll be under stitching here so the seam allowance is pointing this way for this portion from here down but from here up all around the neckline it will be on this side so this is something that can be done you'll find this in coat patterns in some blazer patterns not included in this pattern because you're just meant to top stitch all the way around but I want to do this I prefer to under stitch than to top stitch generally I think the blazer can look a bit more formal if it's under stitched and not top stitched so I'll show you what that looks like inside you can see the break point where the seam allowances part and that will mean that the under stitch will always be hidden i will also put a pin where that seam allowance was split i'm not going to be starting right there i'm going to be starting probably about three eighths underneath there and same as here i'll leave about three quarters of an inch that don't have under stitching there so it will be fiddly and tricky to do this to have the proper access but it's still very much worth it And here, this corner, I'll just try to go as far as I can. I won't be able to reach the full corner. OK, 
Okay, so this will be the center front of the blazer. This is how it's going to look clean on the outside. And, and the stitching there that I've just done will keep this facing inside from this portion down. But from the other side, that's where the lapel will be folded like that. The under stitching will happen under there. So then I'll just switch everything around and just be mindful of the correct direction of the seam allowance I want to be able to under stitch this. When I get to this area here where the burrito is all clean, I don't know how much access I'll have, but I'll do the best I can. Here I'm under stitching on another section of the blazer where the seam allowance is pointing this way. This is a lapel, so this is the seam that's going to be behind it. And this is the corner of that wide lapel. I won't be able to go all the way, but as much as possible. So to accomplish this extra step that is under stitching, it will be done in lots of phases. It's not going to be a continuous stitch because I just don't have access. And I'm sewing the seam allowances to different directions. So after this corner, I'm going to pick up again here, making sure the seam allowance is going this way and I'm under stitching on top of there. And I am using my presser foot that helps me do this very neatly. So now we're going up all the way up this wide lapel and up here, I don't know how much access I'm going to have. Okay, this is going to be very tricky because I have all this here. My goal is to reach that seam, but I don't think I'll be able to. I might be an inch short. Okay, that's as much as I could understitch with the machine. I couldn't reach that seam right there. But never fear. To be able to understitch the other side, I'm going to have to put this through again and get up there as close as I can. Okay, that's as far as I can get. Making sure the seam allowance is on this fabric because on the lapel, this black side is the one that's going to be seen. Now I'm starting after that corner. Here is the pin that marks my break point. This section has already been sewn, so I'll stop about 3 8 before this pin. Okay, so here you can clearly see the understitching on this side and then the understitching on that side. Separation of seam allowances, how they go to different sides. And when this lapel is worn, this is where it's going to fold naturally there. And the stitching will be behind it. And here in the center front, where you see the main fabric, you have the understitching behind this side. It will look very clean, there won't be any understitching to be seen, but the lapel and everything will fall in nicely and facing will stay inside. This is the center back and this small section here, I wasn't able to understitch from that center seam, from there and there. So what I'm gonna do is understitch this by hand. I can put my fingers here, I do have access by hand. And so it won't be anything fancy. I'll just do tiny little stitches here. This won't be seen. The lapel will be folded over this. But I do want this seam allowance to stay where it's supposed to stay. It's not the first time I have to understitch a small section by hand. I'll be done in no time. Here's the center back area. And now I will know that I hand sewed that little section that I was able to understitch by hand. This will help this fold over nicely and this part stay behind. So I'm very happy now to just give this a nice press and I can keep putting this together. I've been pressing it, that's a water stain. Now we have this seam here that will act as one even though we have two layers together there. Remember this is the facing, this is the main but they are exactly the same. The only difference is that on the main there is that little pocket and you have protruding from the pocket 3 eighths of an inch there and 3 eighths of an inch there that will be caught in the seam. So this is where the side panel goes. This bottom has to be surged if you are doing that. After pinning all this down to the bottom, you have an amount protruding at the bottom that will wrap over like this when you sew it. And then when you turn it, 
that will be enclosed. So I'll show you that at the sewing machine. I'm just going to pin right now. Um, this section here acts like one piece and from there on it acts like one piece up to there and then this little section is just one single layer there but it will all be caught within the seam that catches this piece right there. Okay here is that little side panel. This side panel has been true to this shape of the armhole so you'll see that little shape there. Seam allowance will start there and then you just go all the way down the excess of the hem allowance here that is hanging off will wrap around like this and when you sew this it will catch it okay here is that seam sewn this is the bottom that had been wrapped around and now when we flip this that's how the bottom looks so we have the side panel coming from there and then this can attach normally to the back and here we have the pocket coming out from there. You can put your hand in and actually the whole area, all of this could be your pocket bag because there's no specific pocket bag. The facing is the pocket bag. <laughs> That's why I wanted to serge the edges of the welt piece inside everything so it could be super neat because it will be open like that. So that's it really. Now repeat on the other side. Then you can sew this to the back piece and put your sleeve in, finish your hem. Before I show you my finished garment, I just wanted to point out and remind you, when you see me sewing a pattern, the sewing footage that you see has a lot of me in there. I have a pretty expansive library of techniques in my head and things that I know that I've sewn in the past that I think would apply to this type of fabric for a certain type of look. So what you see me sew is not what you will see in the instructions 100%. So you might see something different in the instructions. What I do promise though is really nice results, nice looking garments. And you know, in the grand scheme of things, if you see me walking by, it will look pretty much similar. The only difference visibly in this case is that I don't have that top stitching there, which I really did not want to do. <laughs> I've been accumulating all this experience and I don't want to do something just because when I know that there's another way that could achieve the result that I'm really, really after. In this case, a really clean lapel with no top stitching there. I can't just sew it and leave it and not do anything to it. You either top stitch it or you under stitch it. You need to do something and I chose under stitching, which you saw was way more fiddly, totally doable though. But if you're not interested in that, you can just top stitch and it will save you a lot of time. <laughs> I had this fabric in my stash for well over three years, I think probably three years. And it's really structured, it's really, really thick. Look, it, like if I hold it, it'll probably just like stand on its own. <laughs> and I'll try to show you um, how much it stretches. Look, this is a sleeve, you know, it'll stretch 25% for sure. And vertically, minimally, I would say maybe 10% vertically. So it does have the required stretch. Uh, it is heavy though. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way with my machine, but I really like the stripes. I didn't have much fabric of this available, so I didn't try to match any stripes here on the shoulders. There was no way I could have done anything about that. If you want to have some fun and be the stripe police for my blazer, you are very welcome to. <laughs> you know, I go to great lengths to try and match things up when I can, but it's not going to stop me making a project if I don't have the, the right amount of fabric. Also, the shoulders is a great place to not try to be that hard on yourself because you have hair. I mean, a lot of us have a lot of hair and um, yeah, my hair can just cover up that non-matching area. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> As you saw, you saw the whole construction here. This is one piece, this front. It's one piece and you saw that it's cut twice. So unfortunately it's black inside as well. So I don't know how much you're going to be able to see but they are cut from the same pattern piece. You cut them the exact same way. You have two mains and you have two facings. If you are cutting them all from the same fabric, they are going to look all the same. But I, I wanted a contrast black lapel. And also I didn't have enough to cut another piece from this fabric. <laughs> and then you have a small side panel that starts there, goes down there. It's not a princess seam. This is very far away from your bust. If this was a princess seam, it would be larger and it would come closer to the center, but it's only on the side. On the seam from the side panel that starts there is where this pocket opening is. And from the outside, it looks like a welt pocket, 
but it's actually not it's just a little opening there and when you put your hand inside this whole thing could be your pocket bag like i could get my hand up all the way up to the collar like the whole thing you know in my case i would never ever put anything in here even a little chapstick i think you would see it in the front of the blazer and it would create bulk so i think for me these are just decorative and they were fun to sew but i won't be putting anything inside and actually i would make a simplified version of the metra and just sew this side panel closed without a pocket being there that's what i would do later on but i can't do this in a pattern test because i'm supposed to sew the pattern <laughs> But you know my thoughts about pockets. They are pretty fun to sew, pretty ingenious technique there as well. So that's that. And then this side panel includes part of the back here. Maybe you can see where the stripes get a bit distorted here. So there's a little panel there on the side. Center back seam there has some shaping. And the hem in the instructions appeared as sewn by machine, but I've done all my hems by hand. I just really wanted that clean look on the blazer without top stitching anywhere. I think the only time I would ever sew a hem on a blazer is if it's a really casual one made out of denim or something like that, where I want to highlight top stitching. Maybe that would be the rare occasion. For me, a blazer is always hand hemmed. And of course I did that here as well, same as for the sleeves. The break point, you'll figure it out. You can try your blazer on and see whether the lapel really wants to fold naturally on you. You know, it could be different. If someone else tried on my blazer, it might want to fold differently on someone else. And it's got to do with the bus volume, with a lot of things. But I figured that out and it's right there. And this is inside where the seam allowance was snipped. So the lapel hangs here. They always have to make an appearance, don't they? <laughs> so you can see my lapel is black. It's very clean here. I have no top stitching. But also this layer underneath is not poking out here on the side. And that's because from the break point here, it's understitched. I'm not sure if the camera is going to focus on the understitching right there, but it's holding this layer to the inside. That means that nothing is seen there. But from this area here, this is the side I want to stay inside, so I have the understitching on the other side. From the center all the way to the hem, the understitching is inside here, keeping that nice and neat. So I hope that was easy to understand. I have done this on other patterns that don't have the technique, you know, I've, it's not the first time I've done this. And I decided to do it with this one because I wanted my blazer to look formal. I wanted it to look super clean. I didn't want to have top stitching anywhere. And you know, maybe I would do the top stitching if I was wanting to have a more casual style. But for this specific project and with this fabric, I wanted it to look dressy. <laughs> so I have styled it with some heels and a nice dress. So let's see. Here is a far away look at my Metra blazer. I wanted my blazer originally to be a little bit more formal looking. I didn't really want to have top stitching going through those stripes. My goal was to be able to wear it over a dress like this and to be in a more formal setting, like to go to church or something. I know if you make it look a little bit more formal, it can then translate into looking a little bit more informal with other pairings of clothes. The finished length of the blazer I have here has one inch extra than what you'll find in the pattern. That's just to account for my height. I really like this wide lapel with those points there. There is a little slant in the center right there. It's not straight down from the lapel. And on the sides you have that little panel with the pockets and the back seam that gives you a little bit of shaping at the back. When you put your hands in your pockets, it is the whole facing that is the pocket bag. I really like the black contrast and I think the understitching in separate sections there at the break point give a really clean finish without needing to do any top stitching. So I'm glad I made the decision to sew my blazer that way. As you can see, there is a little overlap there underneath where there could be a button there. I think I would like to put a button there, but it's not part of the instructions. And here you can see the detail of the pockets there on the side, very neat. You put your hand in there and you could store everything because even the facing could be your pocket bag. Up here you can see the top part of the collar. It does fold over like a short collar at the back. The only difference with this one is that it's a wider lapel with a corner compared to the other round, the smaller one. Construction is the same, it's just a different look. I prefer this look, I think it's more edgy. The other one is a little bit more classic. I find the shoulder fit really good. The sleeves are good, I have ease of motion, and of course, you know, it is a neat fabric, so it'll stretch and it'll be comfortable. So of course, this could be a bit more casual, and I'll take some pictures in a casual outfit as well. But yeah, I could go out like this tomorrow and feel amazing. Love the stripes, 
the feel. I like this style with a fabric that has nice structure so that this doesn't buckle. There's two layers here. Not hard to sew, very nice design. I especially love this wide lapel and I'm very happy with the fit of this blazer and just the way it looks here, these points here, these points there. It's a style I've wanted to have for a long time and it's very comfortable. I love the fabric, the fact that it's black and white and that it will go with all the solids. I could wear any color under here. Jeans go with everything. So I can just see me chucking this on on top of anything that ha hasn't got a print. This will come in handy. I've got plenty of solid colored dresses as well that I could throw this on and be ready to go. I love the look, I love the fit and I really like that because it's stretch fabric. It's super comfortable, I can move. You know, I'm not restricted in any way. I know if I made a style like this in a woven and made it super structured and really tailored, that I could wear it and look really formal, but I wouldn't like be able to move and be super comfortable like I am with this one. So I really enjoy that about this pattern. I definitely have plans to make more of these and I have an idea in my head that would be a super, super simple, simplified one. Yeah, it's all in my head, it's all brewing. I even have the fabric for it. So I'll show that to you when I do it. It would definitely take, I think, about half of the time. Here I have it with a more casual style, with a denim skirt. You know, you can replace this for jeans. I could wear any solid colors under this blazer because the blazer is white and black with stripes. So I've chosen red now because red is one of my favorites, but I could put any top here underneath any color. I really like this in a more casual way as well, but just the fact that I've sewn it in a bit more formal way means I can wear it more casually. I don't think I could do the opposite. The sleeves are slightly fitted. It is a stretch fabric, but if you are looking to layer something with a long sleeve underneath, you might want to see the feet of your sleeves first. I wear mine sleeveless, so it's fine, but it's not like there's a lot of room inside the sleeve. I really like this look as a casual way as well. I'm very happy with my project. If you've never made a blazer before, I think you'll like this one. It's not too hard to sew. And you'll find clickable links to video inside the pattern as well if you purchase the pattern. So there's a lot of resources there and I hope my video helps you a little bit. Although I have made it a little bit more complex just because I wanted to, I wanna put more techniques out there as well that I know a lot of you might want to try in the future or you might remember this with another project. I'm always looking to bring innovation and, and new things into the channels. I'm really happy I got to film this breakpoint technique and have it here for you. Remember the pattern is 25% off for the first week. So it's always a good idea if you like a pattern to get it during the release because you end up paying a little bit less. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you again very soon. Bye.